everyone so I woke up that morning on the court feeling cold I got up I looked at him and he was lying there and he spoke to me he said good morning he said he wanted porridge I gave him porridge and then I spent the rest of that day saying goodbye to my husband. It was the most painful but the most tender and loving thing I could ever do. I had to put my fear aside and be there for him. I even had to say, it's okay, you can go when he took his last breath in my arms and I had to take my last breath with him. The last time I ever held him, the last time I could touch him, the last time I could be with him and I had to look at my daughter lying next to a father who wasn't breathing anymore being so brave at eight and touching his face and saying goodbye and promising him that she was never going to forgive get about him and then i went home and our friends cleared the room and we all went home and then we waited because we are from Zimbabwe. We had to do all the repatriation thing. And we took him home. And two weeks later, we buried him. And yeah, the trauma started. The real trauma started. I had lost the man who saw me. His favorite pastime was looking at me. He used to say that all the time. He used to ask me to sit down so he could look at me. He loved talking to me. I loved talking to him. I was in awe of my husband the whole time. The 17 years I spent with him, I was always in awe. He fascinated me. He was funny. He was kind. He was totally crazy. He loved doing adventurous things. Like we were so connected was so connected that I could tell before he got to the door that he was home. I got home from work so excited to meet him every day. And when I did, my soul settled. I felt at peace. I felt at home. And it was the most amazing feeling ever. And now I had to learn to live without it. Instead, I had to learn to live with a boulder in my chest, with a feeling of unease, pain, feeling exposed, feeling lost, feeling depressed, feeling angry. No, rage. I felt unsupported. I felt... I have never felt like that before. I felt so intensely alone. Even in a room full of people, I still felt so, so, so alone. It was hard. And initially, I just wanted to die. I just wanted to not wake up in the morning because that would have been the easiest thing ever for me. And then one day, my baby looked at me and said, Mommy, you're going to die too, aren't you? And I realized I couldn't do that to her. So I made a decision. That's my why. You need to find your why. And my why was I had to survive. I did not just have to survive. I needed to be the best mom in the world. The, I needed to show my girls that, you know, even when life kicks you and you flatten on the ground 
you can still get up and you can keep going and you can flourish and you can be happy I needed to teach them that because they were too young to live in this world that way so once I made the decision that I wanted to be happy again even though I didn't know how I started with cutting off the news I cut off the newspapers it wasn't so hard 2009 was a crappy year as we all remember and I just I watched comedies I did everything I could to have fun in my life I would go out for movies and I did enjoy it initially to be honest but I did I went I tried I went to therapy I do therapy system stage I read books I started looking at the spiritual life I started energy work I started uh, I learned about crystals I I learned I read about angels I I was just looking for something that made me feel peaceful and everything I did eventually started to help I don't know what helped I really don't but everything together got me out of that fog where I had been trying to scratch my hands out of and I got out slowly it was painful and slow and one day I could feel a bit of light I could feel my heart again I could feel a bit of joy again and I held on to it for dear life I held on and I kept seeking the joy I kept going for the joy and I want to help you to be able to do that because I've discovered most people don't allow themselves to feel the pain and sit with the pain and examine the pain and understand why they are in pain because people kept asking me why can't you get past this and I'll tell them because I need to do this I need to grieve for him because if I don't it's going to suck down the line I need to do this now once it's done I'll be okay and, and that's what I did sometimes you need to sit with the pain but you need to start working you have a plan of how you can get out of it and that's what I did and that's what I want to do I want to teach you to heal from any pain heartbreak uh, uh, betrayal uh, 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 death of a spouse, death of parents, death of of pets, whatever it is that you could feel is keeping you stuck with toxic emotions that you need to let go so that you can open your heart up and start loving openly again so you can feel the joy that you are meant to be. You can get back to your natural state where you need to be because we are not meant to spend our lives in pain we're meant to spend our lives in joy and it doesn't matter what you what has happened to you you can choose joy once more you can choose joy again and I can help you to heal and I've prepared a course that's supposed to help you to do this but I'll tell you about the course some other time I just wanted to tell you that it's possible to go through a very traumatic experience and if I, Melody, can heal from Taurai's death, my husband's death, my best friend's death, my lover, my everything's death, and be joyful again, you can heal from anything too. I can promise you that. So I look forward to be talking to you some more. Keep looking out for the videos. They'll be coming. And yeah, let's talk again. Thank you for listening. Bye.